Welcome to Illuminati Silver, where we tell the truth about silver. Today is Saturday the 8th of April 2023, and we're publishing our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 7th of April. Now we know Friday was a bank holiday for most people, celebrating, of course, Good Friday and the forthcoming Easter Sunday and Easter Monday. So we only really had four days of trading. Nevertheless, we saw both gold and silver rise quite considerably, breaking through key resistance levels. And we have one question. Will such rises continue this coming week? Well, let's take a look. First, though, just a quick reminder that we have set up a second channel entitled Finances Do Matter, where we are covering all aspects of finance and investment and the latest banking news. If you haven't subscribed to it and wish to, we've placed a link in the description box below as well as in the comments section. We now have almost 50 videos with a series on investment and business success just starting. So once again, please click on the links below. Now let's look at what happened in the precious metals arena last week. Gold rose $38, rising from $1970 to $2008, having hit a high of $2034 and a low of $1950, a rise of almost 2%. In sterling terms, it finished the week at £1,618, that's up £18, and in euros it closed at €1,841, that's up €24. Euros. Silver rose 86 cents, the same as last week. Well, it was 87 last week. And now providing four consecutive weeks of rising. So it rose from $24.12 to $24.98, having been as high as $25.16 and as low as $23.59, a rise of 3.6%, almost twice the percentage rise compared with gold. So silver is starting to make a bit of a comeback. In sterling terms, it closed at £20.15. and pence. That's up 57 pence on the week. And in euros, it closed at 22.91 euros. That's up 0.64 euros. The gold to silver ratio fell from 81.7 to 1 to 80.4 to 1. Now the difference between gold's high and low was $84, almost double last week's difference. And the difference between silver's high and low was $1.57, similar to the past three weeks. Now, this is what we said last week concerning our forecast. Quote, so this coming week, we're going to be mildly bullish depending on the economic figures being announced. And we see gold trading between 1925 and 2000, with 1900 and 2025 as outliers. And we see silver trading between $23 and $25, with $22.50 and $25.75 as outliers. Well, gold traded mostly within our range and peaked marginally into our outlier territory very briefly and then closed just above the top of our normal range or near the bottom of our outlier range. Silver did the same, but closed within our normal trading range. Now, before we examine this further, let's look at other financials. Bitcoin stands at $27,936, that's down $633 on the week. Equities were mixed with the Dow higher and the other main exchanges lower. The Dow Jones closed at 33485 up 211 points. The S&P 500 closed at 4105 that's down just 4 points. And the Nasdaq Composite closed at 12087 that's down 134 points. Oils were higher, with Brent crude up $5.35 at 85.12, and WTI crude up $5.03 at $80.70. The dollar index stands at 102.09, that's down 0.42 points on the week, and is yet again another fall in the dollar index. Now, as far as economic data was concerned, all eyes really were on the jobs data announced on Friday. But of course, with most markets closed, little reaction could be received. Now, manufacturing PMIs came in virtually as anticipated. So did factory orders and services PMIs were lower than expected by a few percentage points. The ADP employment report announced on Wednesday were lower than anticipated by some 116,000 jobs. 
but the Friday's employment report came in at 236,000 new jobs for March against expectations of 238,000 and actual figures of 326,000 the month before. So we still have robust employment with the un unemployment rate falling by 0.1%. Now while the increasing hiring was the smallest monthly rise in more than two years, the number of jobs created last month was much greater than is typical. Wage growth continued though to moderate closer to the level the Fed would prefer, with hourly wages increasing by a mild 0.3% last month. The increase in pay over the past year also slowed again to a nearly two-year low of 4.2% from 4.6% in February. Now, some analysts believe that the figures are just about enough for the Fed not to raise rates next month. But they seem to forget that the US has added a whopping 1 million plus new jobs in the first three months of the year. It's our contention that unless the PCE or CPI figures fall back significantly, there will be another quarter percent interest rate rise on the 3rd of May. Now this coming week we have a number of Fed chairs speaking which analysts will watch and listen to closely and then we have the important March CPI figures on Wednesday which are expected to come in at 0.4 percent and the core CPI at 0.5 percent which would then provide us with a 6% CPI year-over-year year figure and a 5.5% core CPI year-over-year. Year. Any derivation or deviation from this will affect markets in either direction and more than likely influence the Fed's decision on the 3rd of May. Now we also, in addition to that, have the producer price index on Thursday and then retail sales on Friday. Now, if all of these point to a trend in one direction, we could see some sizable gold and silver price moves this week. If they're conflicting, then less so. We could see price movements as large as last week, if not even larger. And that could be up or down, depending on how these figures balance out. You see, for gold, the key level, the magic figure is $2,000. With 1960 offering some support for now, and 2050 some resistance. Fibonacci fans, though, are predicting gold could indeed see $2,134 any time soon. And that could happen depending on what happens on Wednesday and then Friday. Silver broke above the important resistance of $24.75 and then the key figure of $25 and is just resting below very marginally that figure right now. On the upside, we could be looking at $26 silver and on the downside support at $24 and stronger support at $23.50. From its current position, though, I would not be surprised if we could see silver rise or fall this coming week by another $1.50 and go by another $70 to $80. So with this in mind and in view of the data being announced, we're widening our margins slightly because we could have a bit of a roller coaster this week. We expect gold to trade between 1925 and 2075, with 1875 and 2100 as outliers, and silver to trade between 2350 and 26, with 2250 and 2675 as outliers. Now let us know what you think. Now before we go, just a reminder, we've placed links to our 2023 gold and silver price forecast for the year, also in the description box below. and it, and. it to reiterate what I said at the beginning, our Finances Do Matter channel link is also included. Meanwhile, we'd appreciate it if you would give us a thumbs up, subscribe, press the bell sign, and also we wish you a very, very happy, not too self-indulgent Easter Sunday and Monday, and as always, a prosperous week ahead.